Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever Rush Hour presented by Gold Rush GG, powered by Rival Esports. That is at Rival Esports GG on Twitter. Crelly, it's not at Rival Esports. You have to add the GG. Everybody, thank you for coming. We can, yeah, look at this. We have uh, Jesse hey. on the board, hey. but hey. I got <laughs> some in here, Liquid and Moopy. All of us are top, I think we're all top 10 on the leaderboards. I mean, most of us. Yeah. yeah. Top 10. Most no, for sure. Championship we're, players, yeah. I think. I thought Eddie was top 11. All right, yeah, and you can, okay, yeah, so, and look at, oh, debatable. the timer started. Uh, and, uh, yeah, what are we, boy, what, are we, what are we talking about? Come on. So, <laughs> well, give me a second. This is the Rush Hour segment. This is introducing Rush Hour. This is telling you guys what Rush Hour is. So, this is going to be a one-hour kind of talk show where we just cover the juiciest bits of Rocket League stuff, you know? Yeah. Let's do it. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's just get started. Yeah. What are we <laughs> waiting for? Let's, let's so, go. No, so, so, and then also, uh, Rival Esports, they built everything for us to use. Like, oh, everything, yeah. this Props. literally would not be possible without them. Quent, Strangers, all those guys. Ari, who's operating the production board right now. This is his first time ever operating this board, and he's doing it for the show. Gave us a thumbs up flame. off camera. So, uh, we're super, the super excited operator. about that. And we'll be doing this every Tuesday. Well, we're going to change the start time. To set probably 7.30, because we were scrambling we're a little we're bit. slow. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of people walking on the streets, you know? So well, I actually, we might, yeah, I think we'll still do 7.30, but my, like, I started setting things up at, like, 6.30, thinking yeah. that it was going to be enough time. Yeah. And it wasn't. We'll yeah. change in plans, so, right? But Always fortunately, everyone was watching the show match, so hopefully that was going well for him. Uh, but, yeah, so weekly schedule. Guys, stay, stay tuned on Twitter for any changes on the schedule or if we'll have start times later or not. Um, but yeah, we have, we have our Twitch and Twitters right here, right? Yeah, no, yeah, we don't. Yeah, we, no, don't oh, okay. we don't <laughs> have that right here. <laughs> let's, let's bring up the view of just the uh, couch so we can. And Moopy, stop moving your feet. Oh, my gosh. It was my arms. It's all right. But uh, yeah, just again, you, maybe you guys can introduce yourselves real quick, just so people know who's even oh, on the stream. Yeah. Talk about yourself. I'm Subin, and I play Rocket League, and I have been for a a long time. All right, I I'll mean, add some color because you're yeah. terrible at it. He yeah, was an OG thank you, back thank you. I, I'm Fresh. not here for that. <laughs> team Fresh, all the way back it's in the day, competing in ESL tournaments back since the dawn with Snappy, of time. Time. Stace God, Snappy and Stace God. Yeah, yeah. you remember the gods, that? Oh, dude. They were always a challenge <laughs> a to get ago. through in ESL. Liquid, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name's Liquid. I've been <laughs> playing Rocket League since release, and <laughs> and do you are you make mean I pizza? Mean, I mean, yeah, I make pizza. Um, been playing with these, this guy for and a long time. And you're also a Rust guy. I must tell you that too. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can wide it up. We can bring out the whole. Let bring me into the picture now. I wanna. I'm, I'm a little left out. You know, we're getting ready. No, no, the other one. All of us. Yeah. There we go. There we go. You'll get. You'll. He, what, he'll get the the feel of the board, and he's just gonna be a, a wizard. But uh, Moopy, obviously, no one cares about Moopy. So we'll no, go ahead. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> Introduction. Hey. Uh, uh, I'm Moopy. Nobody know. cares about Weird. me. Um, yeah. I've been playing the game since 2015, but I had no idea there well, was a competitive scene. What about like what about that? Like, I swear there was like a huge tournament, dude. A huge year. one, yeah. I'm, and bring okay, that like close to your face, dude. You amateur. Well, I was drinking. Go. Not I that close. Wanna... A little bit back. Okay, now continue your story about the major victory. Uh, yeah, major victory is the Premier. biggest land of all time. Actually, I don't know if you guys heard about it. Probably. Uh, the, my, my teammate yeah. was James Bond, That's actually. Right. The it was one the AFK GG. Wow. Wow. The AFK GG. That was I think it was, yeah, it was, like, was, was a $100,000 tournament. Yeah. 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 I forget what the upset there. It was either $100,000 or yeah. it was no, no, free I think it was gameplay for three months. I forget which. It was one of the two, yeah. yeah one sure. of those. I can't quite remember That's one either, of them. I can't uh, recall. Undefeated. Right. Yeah, I can't believe I lost you guys. That was embarrassing. Yeah. But anyway, guys, as we close out this first segment, if you are interested, if you're like in the Bay Area, or even if you're not in the Bay Area and you're interested in helping out, this is a 100% community effort. So, uh, like, Rival, they put backbreaking labor into this. We also have Lion out here. He's chilling off camera. Hey, Lion. Uh, reaching out and just trying to help out in whatever way he can. So if you, if you guys are interested in helping out with uh, Gold Rush GG's Rush Hour or maybe one of our Gold Rush events, you're in the Bay Area, you want to help him out in person or remote, just hit me up. My DMs are open on Twitter. Don't abuse that. Because open DMs, you know, I don't want you sending bad stuff well, to now me. they're gonna. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you Quint, we're, we're approaching to, the final 10 seconds. A... I really hope Quint changed the sound of the... Okay, eight seconds. All right, there's no... there's no. I don't hear anything. Oh, wait, it's only going to be on the computer. So, anyway. <laughs> we got some All right, new segment, guys. Up, guys. This one was the first... Uh, 
it was a community voted topic on Reddit. So yep. one thing we'll do for every show is we're going to talk about the the one thing that Reddit upvotes most. Okay. We'll have a weekly Reddit uh -huh. post. We posted one already, a weekly Reddit post where we go out there and people can post what question or what segment they want us to cover, and we will cover it. And so the most upvoted uh, to uh, topic from Reddit was Dignitas. It was a question. I need to. I'll get the guy's name in a bit. Uh, let me actually just bring it up right now. But I'll, I'll start the conversation first. But it was just like how F3 lost their tag as one of Rocket League's dynasties. What will it take for everyone else to catch up to Dignitas? So, I mean, and we can start this mm. by just like what makes Dignitas a dynasty? Oh, yeah. Um, where to start? Well, well I, oh, should we talk start, about Flipside? Well, well, I mean, we could. Well, I think he was more just saying like how Flipside was a dynasty and they fell. We're we're not seeing di like Dignitas fall. And honestly, Flipside yeah. was never even really like a dynasty to the gr degree we've had it from Dignitas. But I think I want to remind people too that Dignitas they were like losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. second at the place start. constantly. Second, second, yeah, it's like a meme, yeah, right? Talk about it. <laughs> um, but uh, as far as Flipside goes, I don't even know if their dynasty kind of declined yeah. because they stopped dominating right. once Mike Rules left, right? Yeah. That's it's kind of kind where... It's surprising that they, they let him go. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, that was back when, like, Rocket League was still really small. Like, the whole Yo. season's prize pool was $75,000. So. It, it still felt <laughs> really awesome. You don't even remember? I told you, I didn't know the competitive scene for, like, a long time. Oh, so my I Okay, know. it was Diddy, Diddy oh, Ops Diddy was the fun. name of the guy mm -hmm. on Reddit. So, Diddy sure. Ops, thank you for that question. <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, Dignitas... <laughs> Excuse my burp. Dignitas, like they, I think the one of the things that is cannot be understated is the synergy that they have. Mm -hmm. yeah, like for sure, yeah. the and cohesion Rock, is yeah. Is in insane. Rocket League, like you go, you look at some teams and they just seem like they have no synergy. And yeah. when Violent Panda even talked about it in his interview, he says synergy is so important in Rocket League because it's not even about like communication sometimes at that point it's just about yeah. how you play off your team yeah right. i think you, you hit the nail on the head oh i cut you off there yeah, yeah they just work so well together i mean they find each other in open space like quite often and the rotations are just so fluid they're all like trying to help each other out it almost feels like they're constantly putting their team into like a 2v1 situation and to me that is because of vision and I was oh. talking to you about mm -hmm. that, Liquid. Like the like the, using your in-game camera is yeah. such an like an underrated skill, yeah. and not even yeah. people don't even really talk about it that much. Yeah. But knowing where other people are on the field, that is literally how you like move your camera. I know right. for me, like one of the things I wish I was better at as a player yeah. was using rear view or yeah. look around. Yeah, yeah. It's it's surprising to me how many people I find like I play with, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't realize you were there," and I'm like. You don't know where everyone is all the time. Like, yeah, you I'm always swivel. looking around. I mean, like, well, you you yeah, watch some people. Well, you watch some people, and you see how much they swivel the camera. Yeah, like, exactly. I watch yeah. Jacob stream, and he like swivels all the time. Yeah, even yeah. though he like he does have pr problems being playing weird. <laughs> but I mean, like I, when I watch players who are really good, they just seem to have super control of their camera. Yeah, no, no, Jacob is insane with the camera work for sure. And but just I, I think that that communication does kind of play a big factor into this because you might see someone right. Uh, with the camera, but you might not know exactly what they're thinking. So I think comms is really where they shine, even despite yeah. KDOP's like slight it's language barrier. Mm -hmm. But we've seen other teams. I mean, flip side, perfect. Yeah. Like Cuxier had problems with that, and he still uh, kind of made it work. The I, I thing, though, about Dignitas is that they have, like, not only have do they have the best players in the world on that team, but they've also gone through that whole phase where they lost. Yeah. And so now they're not only like mechanically and just game wise nuts, they have now been emotionally hardened from well, those. Flip side had We Damn yeah, Girls true. though. But they, they were still, like losing but too. Still, like, I, I just feel like it's going to be so hard for any team to catch up to, to Dignitas mm -hmm. just because they have players who the synergy is there, the skill is there, the mentality is there. They have, they ha they are like the full package. And yeah. if you think about what other teams are out there that can challenge them at this point. Like, who is it? NRG. Is it NRG? Cloud9? They were so close. They one were. Goal, that, was, that was about yeah, as close as you can get. One goal. That was an amazing I'm series. so excited for the season. <laughs> but, I, want, I want them to do it. Yeah, but it's yeah. just, it's, nu it's nuts to me because I just feel like even now, like you go and look at the standings in North America, it's exactly what you think it is. And yep. then in Europe, yeah. Europe, I think so. I, I kind of agree, yeah. But R Right now, it's 
kind of a mixed mash, uh, but I, th I think we are kind of figuring out. Yeah, I think you're and right. Then, and you go look at the Europe standings. Like, who's who's the clear? Oh my God. Who's the clear second in Europe? You know, yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's like, so many roster changes that I feel like it's really hard to tell. You know. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, whatever team Metz is on uh, starts slowly rising because he got maybe dropped or they I don't both know what happened. Decided. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't so want to interrupt. they they kind of. I guess mutually decided to find another player, but with Metza, I think he's just that sort of foundation for a team. Whatever team he's on will slowly but surely improve. He's not flashy he's a or anything. Playmaker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's just solid. He's just there, and whatever team he's on, I, I think they're always in contention to like have a lasting legacy. Yeah. I, I know people don't really look well, at him I, that way. Well, yet, I mean, but. like, I it's it's hard to tell because, like, even with Metza going somewhere, I mean, like Metza, he helped. Um, I think, and when I was watching Complexity, I always felt Magnus was the best player on the team. Yeah, sure, but, sure. But like, yeah, with, I, even I now, it's like too. with Metza, like, I agree that he is going to elevate a team. But the like, the question is, is like, what will it take to dethrone mm -hmm. Dignitas? It's like no matter where Metza goes, Metza's not better than anybody okay, on, yeah, yeah, on Dignitas. Like who, like even yeah. like if you were to imagine, like if you were to form the best team that you can that isn't Dignitas, who would that even be? That's a hard question. Yeah, I, I think uh, I a know. lot might be on there. He, his striking is just Dude, incredible you're right now. A lot? Yeah. Like he, yeah. To he me, a lot is like he disrupts teams. I feel like pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I love a lot, but I don't. I wouldn't put him top three. Like I agree with Mubi because like a lot. I think he is like he's a one. I don't want to say like a one trick pony, but he is kind of he one dimensional. Sort of is. He's kind of one dimensional. Yeah, so you have to build a though. team around him. And I think like yeah. for Dignitas, they're so good at everything. And I think to be the best team, you have to have all players that are amazing at everything yeah. and feel natural playing that 100% rotational, positional, like team playing. You you could you definitely could argue that all of Dignitas is good at everything, but I definitely think that each player has. Uh, something that they really shine at. There's there's not a level playing field for every one of them. Like for instance, Violent Panda. I, I think there's nobody in the world faster than him right now. And the, just like, simply and just speed. His, yeah, and his center like his, the, his passing plays. Yeah. Like I was watching K Dop and Violent Panda just play like on stream today. Like those guys are always looking to make that team play. All right, yeah. final final 15 seconds, Whoopi. What do you got to say? Ah, oh, jeez, why you got to point at me, man? <laughs> All the I don't know, man. You, these guys are nuts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Like, like I said, NRG, they were so close. Literally one goal away. It was yeah. devastating. Like, I was heartbroken. I remember those last like 10 seconds. I was like, they can do this. They can tie it up. Do you think any? Player and then they could... did it, and I was like, oh my god, oh, I called it. <laughs> All right, next topic, oh, guys. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about the RLRS. I'm just going to read off some results. Read off like what I think the big news was in there, and mm -hmm. then one of you guys can just run with something. All right, so the peeps are two and zero. Oh. Splice. 2-0. Peeps beat Compadres, which is Moses' new team, and the Magicians, which was um, the old Space Station Gaming. And then Splice beat Magicians and Applesauce, which was old school, out of style. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Bread also 3-0. Uh, or Bread is 2-0. Uh, oh, or no, they're 3-0. They beat Magicians, Applesauce, and someone else. I don't ha have that on here. Let's but go, then, you. Yes. And then uh, <laughs> let me look up who that was, actually, because that's driving me nuts right now. I'll look it up in a second. But, yeah, bread dominating, as kind of we'd expect. And then uh, in Europe, Excel 0-2. So, Marky Duda, X World oh. Champions 0-2. Yeah. And then Savage, obviously, they looked really good. That's painful for the once great champion, right? Yeah. No, it's definitely weird to see uh, Marky struggling, especially in the RLRS. But, uh I don't know. He, he seems so confident. Otherwise, yeah. whenever you see an interview with him, he's like, "Oh, I'm the best. I'm the best." You know, <laughs> well, I love Marky. Like, yeah. I've gotten yeah. to, I've gotten to hang out with Marky. He's oh. over overconfident. And oh no, I, I like, could be. Didn't keep up. I don't know. All right, no. so I've got it here. Wait, Brett is just two and zero. Oh. <laughs> All right, I was wrong. It's the peeps that are three and zero. Oh. Yes, I need to three? get my facts straight. Don't sleep on the they peeps. They pretty sleep. much requalified for next season, almost. I know. So one more game. The peeps beat the. That's right. The hosses. How did I forget about that? The Hosses, who was like savage of North America. Yeah. Yeah. That was, a, that that was, was crazy. a close game, right? And, and it all came yeah, down to Gyro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, Gyro. Yeah, that what was an impressive gyro. showing and from that And maybe, like, what, maybe you guys can talk about this, too. Is like we're starting to see a lot of these players. Like, I mean, we used to play in rank A with yeah. some of these guys, and now yeah. they're like in the rival series. Yeah. I, I, I think Gyro, whenever I would run into Gyro, it was literally like you're playing against a wall. Like, not 
a wall that's at their net, it's a wall that's right in front of yours. Like he is constantly getting they in your way. Like yeah, he's, he's always getting in your way yeah. and just causing a complete ruckus. It's so frustrating to play against. And so I think yeah. that's a common trait like amongst like good players to have them like lurk around the yeah. ball and they'll just chase even if the the hit is not like a forward hit you'll see them like maybe making a 50 for a teammate or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about Splice. So Splice had like so many people expecting high, like they had high hopes for them. Yeah. This was kind of a, a and then they went 2 and 5 last season. Now like coming in 2 and 0 oh right out of the gate they had to requalify. They're looking really good and they also have Dapper as a sub. So Splice yeah. kind of has a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think Dapper could replace, like, if he was to replace someone? I love him, but I, I, you know, I it's got to I got to bring it three. up. Hold on. Oh, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. All right. All of us will say on three who we think. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So, what are we doing? Okay. If you don't <laughs> <you're gonna laughs> say who you th you'd who think, think he'd replace. Dapper would replace on uh, Splice. No, on I don't want to do that. This is going to be mean. Okay. No, it's not. It doesn't. It's like, we're not saying that he should replace him. No, I'm saying he should. It's just he would, if anything. I will say, I'm not saying that he should. I'm saying who he would replace. All right, on three. Okay. One, two, three. No, no dude. dude. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure what you were going to say. It. Like, no dude or dude. Okay, knows. see, but here's the thing. It was a giant meme. Yeah. Like, at first, everyone thought no dude was getting kicked. For <laughs> that, I, I didn't was, know about this. He was like, you but. assholes. Like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> he's subbing. Well, the thing he is, he probably takes it well though. He's a, he's I, a funny yeah, guy. He's, yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. He's got a huge ever. ego. It's fine. He does, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he like <laughs> rips up like as casters. He like rips us on Twitter yeah. all the time. Yeah. Then he, he went to Northern Gaming, and he was like the worst analyst in the history <laughs> of analysis. So I'm pretty sure he got humbled from okay. that. But yeah. but no, I, I, and also like uh, Dapper though. It's you know it was interesting though that Splice is so confident in their team mm -hmm. that they have a World Championship performer who you know dapper yeah. season three like going and almost beating Flipside back in season three like has the experience at the pinnacle of rocket league competition and they stay with the same squad and they still make it that's pretty awesome yeah yeah and the fact that splice as an organization kept them the whole time yeah that's true because they've you know they've been together for so long and i think now they're finally making their breakthrough with the 2-0 mm -hmm. i'm hoping they can keep it up but with bread and like even Pe like peeps is pulling games that a lot of people didn't think they were gonna be able to pull like versus Haas's for example like that game five win it's the game five it's yeah. always the game five for the peeps but <laughs> i'm hoping to see them sweep one team at least just just so they can shut everyone up you know oh crap yeah. we're running out of time I actually wanted to talk about this more we didn't get to talk about excel too much or savage but we're moving on that's it uh we'll actually be moving on to talk about the rogue versus ghost series rogue was up two to nothing <sighs> and they got reverse swept no nope. did you did you guys see that series it was oh. devastating it, it was, hurt yeah i, I was watching i was i was so <laughs> happy for rogue. i was like two oh let's go baby let's i think everyone it. heard about it <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it just fell apart well, i don't I know mean, what happened it's like i was watching that and there's like a lot of people on twitter and on uh just the internet that's you guys saying like they're attacking Joro or like people are saying like replace Joro with Matt and like do this do that mm -hmm. and like I can see the the thought like if something's not working try to do that but I went back and I was watching that series it wasn't like they were all just playing not great yeah. like yeah. The, it's a team game when you I talk mean, about like, synergy yeah that's they had no synergy none. it's definitely a team with none for sure yeah, yeah. there's definitely times when Sizz was getting in the way yeah for, double committing like, I think whipping. I think I think they're like overthinking it or something because I I wouldn't be able to just strictly say that Joro should be replaced by Matt. I, I don't know. It's kind of difficult. And Sizz is the captain, right? Mm -hmm. As far as I know. So if you take out the captain, suddenly you know who's going to be keeping the team focused and all that stuff. So I don't know if Matt is the type of person to do that. I know that he kind of just focuses on his yeah. game, and that's good. But you kind of do need a captain on the field. Yeah, and and like I, it, to me, it's, it might be a situation where they're just like putting a ton of pressure on themselves. Like that's true. because I know that Jacob in one of his interviews was saying like he doesn't he doesn't want anything less than a world championship appearance. This last season was the first time that he didn't get to a world championship. Mm. So you know now he's teaming up with Sis and Joro. There like there's a, I can't imagine the pressure Joro's under because he's coming in when people were already questioning that move, and now they're 0 and 2. But like looking at the actual games, I don't think it was Joro's fault. Like I even in game five. If you go back and look in that game five, the last goal that got the lead, Jacob 
he got boost and pushed forward and accidentally ran into Joro when Joro was trying to get back and left Sizz all alone on the mm. on the play. Yeah. Like and he probably should have either gone back or like him uh, Jacob take it and have Sizz go back. You could just tell that they're all like playing their own game. They're not really all on the same page, which yeah, is yeah. something that's different than like a dignitas. Yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be tough for them, I feel like, to to bounce back. But it's still, like, or like we saw Ghost yeah. seem to be in trouble oh, all last just, season yeah. and then barely made it in. Even now, Ghost, I, I wouldn't say is that much better because if I remember correctly, that's the game where Juro had an own goal and then the very next goal or maybe a couple after was another own goal by Ghost. Yeah. So they were just returning the favor. I, I don't think there was much synergy going on on either side. Yeah, and for Goat, like, I mean, that's the the rogue side of things. So, uh, like, I personally, though, like, Jacob, I feel like is an incredible player. But he's I another agree. player, like, a lot who you have to build a team around. Yeah, Because he's like he has such a specific, heavy, yeah, he has know, a specific wise, play style. Boost-wise, I think so, too. So, I, I want to see Rogue bounce back. I, like, Jacob, he carried that team with some insane shooting last season. Like, if you go back and watch week two back when he was playing, like, mind-boggling shots. But for Ghost... Ghost seemed like they, like their their defense has was su has been really good, like against everybody, even yeah, like Cloud9, EG. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the the offense where things seem to be struggling for them. Like Lethemir has having to do a lot of stuff by himself. He doesn't have to. I mean, that's <laughs> like what a do you mean? Thing, he right? has to because give his teammates yeah, space, right? If a teammate doesn't feel comfortable moving up, then it's it's hard to really start an offensive play. I feel I'll, like I'll just give them this one piece of advice: if any of them feel like they're constantly boostless, it's likely someone is turning on the ball a little too much. And I think it's uh, really clear when you see Lethemir play that he's likely to be the one to do that. He's really good, but he has to recognize that his teammates are too. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I like. To, and also, to further your point, in the Universal Open, like, Memory was the one who was taking all the shots. Yeah. Like, he was the – and his shots were, like, now look, super accurate. Now look, yeah. you know, he's doing completely different things. And also, like uh, – but and, – and also, one thing to touch on when we're talking about Ghost is Zane Jackie. Like, Zane Jackie, you hear people say it over and over. It's like, Zane Jackie's probably going to get dropped this season. And he doesn't. He's always been going season after season. People give him a lot of crap. And he's I a like, trooper. He is a trooper. <laughs> I yep. think – but watching him play, I love the passes that he makes. Like, even in yeah. this pass series, like, he's a good passer. It's just he doesn't shoot well. Like, he's got to work on his shooting. That's true. Um, but I, I think Zane and Leth have kind of stuck together for so long because they feel comfortable with their dynamic. It's just a matter of, like, fitting that third in, which is really – what everybody's trying to do, right? That's yeah. the hardest part. And see, that's what yeah. saddens me too is because I was looking forward to memory being on RLCS because he's such an insane player. You're like, I wanted him to be up there. And now that he is, it's like I can't even see him shine because he's just not being implemented well. Yeah, I agree. And I guess it's, you know, Lethemir, he does have a really strong personality. Like he is like a very much, I am a captain. This is my team. Like, this is how we're going to do things. It's an alpha guy. Yeah, he's very <laughs> alpha. <laughs> but uh, but I, I'm with, like, and it's also, like, it is their real first season yep. as this roster. So it's, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even, like, when Garrett came in to NRG that first season, his numbers weren't, like, the best on the team. Like, That's it true. took time for him to feel like it was his team, too, and start, like, being more aggressive. Yeah, but I feel like they kind of knew what was wrong. I remember maybe it was in a stream or something, and Garrett was saying how uh, he just has trouble reading Jacob, right? Uh, yeah. That's, that's the, the roster back then. So, well, they fixed it. Mm -hmm. Ghosts, do they know what's wrong, and mm -hmm. are they on their path to fixing it? They, and it doesn't seem like they are. It might be, though, like, too, just, like, how they choose to play, because, if like, going back and looking at the Cloud9 series, Memory had so many, like, Saves like yeah. big yeah. saves. Oh, dude, he was insane with those saves. I was just like, how? <laughs> <laughs> what? Were you just there? I think it's yeah. just, and maybe like it is. In twos, he was taking a lot of shots, but in threes, like I mean, even back when he was in uh, RLCS for the first time, he got savior of the season. So I think he just in threes naturally tends to maybe want to go back to the net and make those saves. Mm. And if you are, if memory's doing that, then Zane Jackie like is traditionally not a strong shooter. Mm -hmm. then the offense is going to be put on Lethemir's arms yep. or on his shoulders. So maybe what they need to do is, like, say, Memory, I know your instincts are to go back, but, like, 
maybe attack, like go mm -hmm. up and, and where you would normally go back, maybe try a half rotation and stay up field, let Zane Jackie go back and you and Lethemir attack. But I mean, right now they're, you know, they're not in last. So maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll keep, <laughs> keep going. But I just, I, I struggle to see them really competing for top four if they don't change how they do the offense. And you, you mentioned the strong personality that Lethemir has. I wouldn't necessarily say that Zane or Memory have a, a similar one, you know? So it, maybe it's easier uh, for them to just say, you know, like Lethemir, go on ahead. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just difficult to communicate as teammates, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Yeah, but and it's I think again it just goes back to like synergy. There's so much in Rocket League where you don't have time exactly to yeah. make a like to think or to communicate, and you have to just do your instinctual play. And players who have uh, complementary in instincts, that's what builds synergy. But that's it for Rogue versus Ghost. We're moving on to the next topic. This one I'm very happy to talk about. We're talking about the return of Cookser, or the, so oh, ooh, yes. you know, finally. So, so, uh, and I mean, I guess he never really went away. Last season, he was in the hunt for Golden Striker and mm -hmm. in the hunt for MVP. But like Cookser in Week One, they lost, and it like in my opinion, it was you know Cookser didn't play horribly, but this past week we got to see what happens when Cooks is hitting his shots, and they got like they were they looked really good when Cookser. First off, I, th I think Cookser is that type of player that you should build your team around. You know, mm, we were talking mm. about that. And Flipside has totally taken note of that. And he's like their flagship player. So I'm really glad the direction they're taking the team. And to see him shine like that, oh, my God. It's, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, like, another reason I think they worked really well together is because uh, Mystic was doing really good on defense the entire time. Like, he was always there whenever they were in, like, a high-pressure situation just in the back brings her back around and then cooks her and Yukio can mm -hmm. do their thing, you know? Yeah. And Mystic, he's, you know, like, again, these are guys who have been all the way to the, the finals. Yeah. You know, Yukio yeah. obviously, uh, uh, you know, coming in, he was kind of a diamond in the rough found by Flipside and given a chance. But, like, cooks her and Mystic, if they can bring it back, like, they, Mystic in the World Championship where he did make it to the finals, he was, like – it was like, who is this guy? Where, where did yeah. this mystic come from? <laughs> so if we can see flip sign, get back to land, maybe we'll see that mystic again. I'd love to see Yukio play on the world championship stage. But Cooks are like, he's going to have to keep doing what he's doing. Like so much of flip side success is going to ride on how Cooks are is shooting and, and how he's playing. It's also possible that I think that Cooks are the type of player that um, he kind of needs space. You know, if you are going to have that player that you build the team around, you need your other teammates w w like to find him situations w where he has opportunities. And I think Mystic is definitely that player that uh, he's just, he's also quite fast. Like, com I would compare him to Violent Panda. Uh, so I, I kind of, I want to give him props because if Cuxier is playing well, that means that his teammates are making it happen. Making space. And making space. For him. Making him yeah. really shine. So yeah, Mystic had team. some yeah, Mystic had some really good passing plays as well. Like I, it was awesome to see Flipside. It's kind of a shame they've only played two series. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Uh, I'd love to see more. I, I want to see more. I think because, they have a lot of potential for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that like it's just Cookser when he's playing his best, he really is such a difference maker. Like there's so many been so many moments where it's all come down to like a one goal situation, and Cooks is the guy like who pulls it off. I think he sees the game just differently than us. <laughs> he's not like us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a very patient player, I feel like. Does anyone still know what his camera settings are? Or no? uh, I don't. <laughs> I think they're a little bit more normal he's now. Like, he's like the one person I remember just being like, no one knows what his camera settings are. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Super mysterious. But, like, he's such a nuts player. Everyone's like, oh, what are they? What are they? What, are they? what are controls? <laughs> they're, all, they're, they're probably like 60 FOV, uh, zero angle. Plays. Like, he used to stream, and, like, it's just gone. <laughs> yeah, and let's see what their you know week what three matchup. And, again, they only play once in week three. But it's against Dignitas. No. Oh, wait, his, so. well, there's a story about Cuxer. He was so, like, secretive about his camera settings and why, uh, you know, he, he w never wanted to really tell people, you know, why did he make this change? Why did he make this change? Or even tell people what his current settings are. Because uh, when the, the Rocket League Replays website first came up, yeah. and he, he noticed that, oh, like, they have, um, they have my settings there. I don't want people to know. He would change... Like between games, 
to you change the settings and then in game turn them back on. So like if you look into early replays, it's likely they're not even the settings he was playing with. Dude, that's crazy. He was next level. Well, I'm does, telling it you. does equal skill. So well, he's like, no, and I was looking at all those replays. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Like, it really well, makes you think like, like he figured something he's out. He's an ultra yeah, 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 yeah. Like he he's used just... to play. Like he was a like a top Italian Tekken player too. Yeah. So like I didn't know that. Know that. Yeah. So he he's like even before Rocket League, he had experience coming in and competing and in fighting games. It's like a different species altogether mm -hmm. like it's just you versus one other player it's all about like the mind games like trying to like you know yeah like make them go ahead sorry i was no. gonna say i wonder what resi played on in tekken oh gosh <laughs> 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 maybe that's Stre a secret stretched or just gotta play some tekken the hitboxes get bigger on the character that <laughs> play it four but, by like, 400, this but. this next week though <laughs> is going to be such a challenge like dignitas they're still looking unbeatable. Like they, they mm -hmm. are like, and the thing is, Dignitas sometimes will have close games, mm -hmm. but they seem to always win them. Like with Mouse, yeah, that was close. That was yeah. a great game. It's but like something about Dignitas, they always manage to win. So yep. like, if Flipside can get a win here, like I like, I'll, I'll save it for the next segment. But like Cookser, I feel like he has the ability to like just elevate an entire team. And just be mm -hmm. like a difference maker. So I just, if Mystic, uh, Mystic and Yukio can step up, oh my gosh, that's what I want. Yep. I'd love to see him come back. But yeah. Yukio is keyboard and mouse, right? Yukio is yeah, keyboard is. and mouse. So, all right, we're going to skip what ahead. I think we've got everything that we said on that. I can go ahead and advance the topic. Uh, we're going to get into um, MVP predictions. So, uh, this, I want us to kind of, Gus, I'll, I'll go through, or like what we'll do here is um, uh, I'll say who I want for NA MVP, and then you say who you want, you say who you want. I think we all have kind of a NA first. So, yeah, we'll do all NA right. first. We'll give you a moment to think about. We'll let chat kind of discuss who they think the NA MVP is. And, you know, maybe we can change this next week. But, uh, you know, just, you know, let it sit, think for a moment, and uh, – and, and we can talk about it in just a moment. I'll give you guys till seven minutes and 10 seconds, which is about 10 more seconds. So. <laughs> <laughs> Could have just said that. Oh, yeah. I thought we were getting seven whole minutes. Yeah, we're no, just going to no, sit no. here and, yeah. and ponder our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you guys? NA, right? Yeah, NA. we'll do NA. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll go first, who I think is going to be MVP this season. And I think it's going to be Squishy Muffins. Okay. Who do you think? Squishy Muffins. Uh, Justin, he's hmm. playing insane. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Justin as well. Okay, wait. Were we talking about the whole season or just, whole season. This, just so far? Play. League play. Just league play? League play so far or league play in total? At, at the end of league play, who will be the MVP? I think it's Justin then. Justin. Yeah. I got to go with Justin. And who, what did you, who did you say? I said Justin as well. You guys Come all on, said Justin? Man. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, I think honestly, like, if I'm going to pick somebody on NRG, like, I, just think I can see the Justin pick too. Yeah. Like, I think Garrett G, Justin, uh, Jane Apps, and squishy muffins are probably like the leaders. Yeah, pretty much. No, that makes sense to me. But it's just uh, I know I, I know Garrett G was like feeling not feeling himself last weekend. So like I don't know if he's gonna be able to break that barrier but next week. But he says that. But like I know. But he's, then he's he, Garrett then G. He hits those shots to <laughs> yeah, like compared close to other people. Series. It's yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. having a great time. Yeah. It's, it's like in yeah. CS when people are complaining that one player is getting all the kills for the other ones. <laughs> or you know that's why my favorite player is not playing me. so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's like for me the reason I pick Squishy Muffins is because I think that this is going to be a big season for Cloud9. Like they won I the Universal Open. They have like even back when they won Dreamhack Atlanta, everyone's like this is going to be the team. Yep. And then like they had a huge tear, but then they've kind of like they went on a period where they didn't win any majors. Now they've won a major this past uh uh, this past off season, and now like tournaments playing well, gimmicks playing well, Squishy's playing well, and I think Squishy like th I just ha I I don't know I have a feeling he's going to just go insane, mm -hmm. and really Cloud Nine is going to be like I would not be surprised if they win the World Championship this season. Yeah, I mean honestly, I feel like more and more lately they like really want it, so I think they're really pushing themselves like over the line to to get that championship mm. if possible because i mean i could definitely see i've i've been able to see it for the past season or two you know mm -hmm. so like this well, what could do you be think their about season justin tell me what, what you pick guys justin. Pick justin uh justin is playing so good right now the best one of the best players in the world garrett isn't he doesn't have to do anything you know come on yeah. <laughs> Who, who have they played so far? Um, I can check right now. I yeah, I was going to ask about the record. I, I can I, I bring can't it up. I have a connection to the internet right now. You guys can Amazing. keep talking. Nice. Yeah, so Justin is the type of player on NRG that 
when his teammates uh, kind of take care of the opposition, he's just landing free shots, free shots. What? <laughs> no, you can keep going. I'll just tell, tell that's, you. That's basically it. He sinks the shots that he is given every right. time. Yeah. Every time. There's yeah. just He does not miss. You can count on him to hit those. And it's creative, too. Like, every shot he makes, it's like... All right. So this is why I think <laughs> it's too close to... I mean, I didn't... Th like, this is why it could be too early to call for Justin is because they've played FlyQuest and Allegiant so far. Fly, okay, okay. True. So... I was wondering. I was... Okay. And, and uh, on the other side... Uh, Cloud9 has played EG, G, or Ghost, and Rogue. So, like, it's crazy to me oh, how, like, there's such a huge divide between the top I, teams in North America and the top teams in Europe. That, it's cr That still explains, though, why Justin maybe is popping off so far. Because uh, Garrett traditionally is a little bit more passive on mm -hmm. NRG. So if the pull isn't even getting to him, that's likely why he's not feeling mm -hmm. so hot. You know, it, the play's just not reaching yeah. him. I think, like, we'll know... Once these guys play each other, yeah, like the Cloud9 exactly. versus Energy series is going to be That's the decider. Be good yeah. All right, we're past the halfway mark. We got to move to Europe. Um, say who you think that European MVP is going to be. Ready. I'll start. If Flipside makes land, it's Cookser. Like I, I want I, like I want to pick Cookser. And if Cooks, if Flipside does make it to land, it will be because of Cookser. And to me, like just the definition of most valuable player, he would be the most valuable player for me. Violent Panda. He's my favorite player. <laughs> He's a captain. Okay, we'll go back. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Turbo. Turbo? Turbo. Yeah. Turbo. You're going to pick KDOP so we round out the <laughs> No, I was going to pick Violet Panda 2, but, hey, but I was also thinking Alex 161 just Ooh. because he's spicy, man. Spicy? <laughs> no, well, card we'll take over here. Nobody, 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 I want to hear this. See, but I don't, I don't, hear this. I don't know that. enough <laughs> about those players to to say well, what I can, you know? Well, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I just, I'm just saying from what I've seen so far in league okay, play, like, have you because, you know, we have to do with the now. We can't look yeah. at last mm. last season's because records and be RLCS like... Because they don't have performance exactly. under their belt. Exactly. So we yeah. can't look at last season's, you know, mm. even if they were in RLCS already, I wouldn't be able to look at that and be like, oh, well, they're going to make it or they're not going to make it because look at NRG. Who thought they were going to be grand finalists last season? I mean, I really wanted them to be. I've been a fan since the beginning, right? Yeah. You? Yeah, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Liar. Well, that guy's been around for but a while, right? Alex161. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're, I mean, they're, de they're I definitely top players. I'm just saying, like... He's a German player, right? They I think started German, off yeah. too he's well. German. They could have taken that series against Dignitas. Like, I saw it happening. Like Yeah. They, they the surprised me, too. Yeah, exa exactly. They're very surprising. So, like, I think... And, for example, in CSGO... Um, what's their name? SK was a dark horse. And then they became the best players in the world. And they, they were like, they just had that dynasty, you know, like we were yeah. talking about earlier. I think mouse sports could do that. Mm. That's interesting. And uh, that's definitely something I want to, to want to watch further. But then you talk about Violent Panda. What, what do yeah, you think? Yeah, he does so much for his team on, on, on the game day. But I think people really underestimate how much value he brings to the team through his leadership skills. Because whenever I watch uh, his streams, you can just tell that, you know, he's really trying to elevate the players that he's with. Mm -hmm. he, he, yeah. sees, he sees what his teammates are good at, and he tries to bring that out in them. And somebody, I'm not going to usually read Twitch chat, <laughs> but I do want to call out one guy who says Kronovi going under people's radars. And I agree with that. Mm, like, I did true. see that. Like, even JNAPS' numbers right now are because he's stealing everyone's freaking goals. Like he, he wasn't even playing <laughs> oh, okay. like that, like like MVP caliber. Honestly, uh -huh. Cronovia was doing a lot of really good work as well. Yeah, so he does. He's a good kudos passer. to that. He's a good passer. That was uh, inconvenient yeah. timing that said that. So thank you. But <laughs> Twitch chat, don't get ahead of yourself. I probably won't read too much unless we're bored. Sorry, Twitch chat. Yeah. Well, uh, who did you pick? I for picked Turbo. Yeah. Turbo. I just I don't know. I feel like in the last series, at least I watched of him. He was playing uh, versus Fnatic, and countless times you, you'll see him like rotating in and. De like demoing a goalie or just creating space for Panda to pass. So mm. I don't know. I think he does like the dirty work kind of. And he's yeah. a three time. And he's really good at the it. Three time. So. He's yeah. the only three time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he has won more resume. than half of the world championships. Isn't that weird to think about? <laughs> that is like, weird. He has won more than half <laughs> our world championships. He's the faker of Rocket League, I guess. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's a monster. A mechanical genius. So how, how many uh, championships has faker won? Uh, that's a good question. Because I know you know more about. I, yeah, maybe back then. I don't remember now. Maybe two or three. <laughs> All right. Oh shoot! I think we. This we, is a league stream we're, now. We're, yeah. We we okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> this was a sub in uh, Earth. All right. Next segment. It's 
called desk predictions or caster predictions. This right, is right. what you want to yeah, talk about, so, so I'll let you talk about it. So I, I am watching CSGO a lot, and something that I really like about their production is that they hold their casters accountable for the decisions that they make on predictions. At, at the end of a tournament, they'll have uh, like pictures of, oh, what, what team did everybody pick? And you kind of actually can trash talk the casters that did not get anything right, and I'm sure lots of people like to shit talk Thorin, but yeah, honestly, yeah. I think it brings it more character, and it, it, it ho holds them accountable yeah. for anything they actually say. Yeah. You know, I, I will tell you why this is hard. Yeah. Because that <laughs> takes resources, and uh, how much do people really care? You know, it's like, do you, do you think people really care how many? You know, I, I maybe so maybe about Gibbs. Maybe people <laughs> care about Gibbs. What he has to say. I personally don't, but <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, you know, it's yeah. it's it's just like transparency. It's it's hard to track. All, like somebody has to track all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then we all like you also have to make graphics and stuff around it. But um, I would be interested if people really did want to know, because it could be kind of fun. But like, what what do you guys think? Do you really care? Do I you mean, really care? When I'm watching, I'm like, oh, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm like, you're an idiot. So like, you, nah. you and think? then and then my team will win. I'm like, ha. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I, I I always feel like people don't care. No, like, I care. I like you, have you to can make banter. Them care. If you do the research and you have like evidence to back up, you know what you're trying to say. I feel like yeah. that's, that is interesting. If, Even if watching CS:GO, and, I don't know. I used to get mad all the time at the casters, yeah. especially Thorin all the time. He'd be like, no, I love blah, 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 and I'm like, shut up, Thorin. <laughs> you're yeah. going to win, but and you're going to feel also stupid. It's like a challenge, too, is like, we don't really have any Thorns. Like, yeah, Gib no. Gibbs Not is yet. probably <laughs> like, yeah, Gibbs is like the, the guy who's on the desk the whole time. But even this season and last season's, like, we would always change. Like, there was mm -hmm. a period of time where I was on the desk a lot, but I'm not anymore. And so, like, we have Axel Toss and Gibbs who are always on there, but we don't really have, like, in a lot of like or in some esports where they have like people who are just analysts mm. and then you have people who are just it doesn't casters. necessarily no. have to be just them though it can be all of the talent mm. because yeah you don't expect the people that are just uh casting the games to have as much in-depth analysis but it's still fun to be able to kind of cheer on your caster yeah it's, we're gonna you like, know what i want to yeah. go to twitch chat and see what they have to say guys if you are watching and gals do you guys really care who uh <laughs> do you guys really care who uh, or what the the caster predictions and stuff are? Like, do you do you want to see? Do you want to know records and all that kind of crap? We'll r wait and hear what Twitch has to say. But you guys can keep going. Do like a oh. straw poll. Straw poll? No, straw, straw poll is too is too much. Too much work. Just People yes. are saying yes, but I feel like they're trolling. No, it, no, I'm I, serious. That's part of it. Like, I feel like you're the only one that doesn't care. Do you and watch we CSGO? All care. <laughs> and then, well, you know, I just like always imagine like people like you. You look at Twitch chat during Rocket League, and it's just like people saying, talk it league, talk it league, start the game, start the <laughs> game. That's because you're not start saying anything. <laughs> GG. Yeah. That's just Twitch you chat, though. You can't something. do anything about that. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, for me, I'm a, I'm a lurker. I, I only really lurk, like, on most streams, maybe, you know, I'll say something here and there. Oh, God, that's my yeah. alarm. Don't yeah. okay, listen to well, that. Okay, you know, what, no, what's no, no, that no, alarm for? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. It's just time. embarrassing. Exactly an hour. Um, I'll have to use the restroom. <laughs> 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 oh god. Um, Professional no. production. What was I talking about? <laughs> oh, I don't even know. <laughs> you were saying you were a lurker. <laughs> yes, I'm yes. a lurker, but that doesn't mean I don't care about the predictions. Like I said, I'm very like, I really care. I don't know why. It's just, it's just how I am, and I'm sure a lot of people are like that. Yeah, no, I I feel like you might have convinced me. So I'll, I'll go back and talk to the team. We'll yeah, see if fun. maybe there's something it's we can do. I know Gibbs you know? has done in, in the past where he will, like, keep track of everything for everybody. But we haven't really always made it mandatory. So, you know, yeah. maybe come up with something. Maybe you don't think that people care because, I mean, if the players didn't compete with each other, we wouldn't care about any of them either, right. you know? Let's have the <laughs> casters compete with each other. Then you could have your favorites yeah. and an underdog. And I think it's so much yeah, fun. Yeah, it makes it a competition. It it's is a, a lot more fun for everyone to watch. A competitive spirit. Yeah. 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 And plus, <laughs> I would win every time, most likely. Well. <laughs> you know, I mean, have you seen Gibbs' predictions this season? Gosh. Mm. Real bad. Real I just got to say, Gibbs is one of those people that gets me heated, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like how to say in allegiance, they're not winners, you know, like stuff like he's that. He's a controversial he's figure. Just, you know, he just, at least he said it with confidence. Maybe he though. is a Thorin. Gosh, he he's, he's might be. actually more matter. controversial than you guys think. Yeah. With confidence, it doesn't Dude, matter. He, he is. <laughs> All right, so let, here's one of the last ones. Um, 
I think I put it for more time than I, I meant to. It's seven minutes. But uh, talking Whatever. about stadium. Stadium. Yes. We need oh, to talk about stadium. So good. So good. <laughs> All right, listen. Listen, Psionics. We need maps like stadium. Put, put stadium in competitive, please, because – you realize how shit people are, and excuse my language. <laughs> you realize how shit people on, this are is, this when is a you have a map server. that you need so much ground play and so much teamwork just to get a goal because you can't you can't just ride along the wall exactly. and carry the ball back and forth because that's pretty much what standard you know, maps are. You know, you know, like I agree with you, and I think the thing that drives me nuts about uh, Psionics and their the way they do maps is the fact that they like one for everything that's not standard, it's not ranked. To me, everything should be ranked. No. You make it ranked all the time. Except for Let, Wasteland. Go listen on. to me. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. You make it Tokyo, ranked. Tokyo. And if you're going to have a huh. non-standard map, you could have a non-standard playlist like Rocket Labs. But don't do map preferences. Let people queue for the freaking map that they want to play. That's Do smart. not do preferences. Yeah. Why do you do preferences? I hate that. Yeah. If like, and I'm playing counter. I get it. It might be because, you know, oh, we don't want to segment the player base or, oh, we don't want to, you know, you know, we don't want to split pe the population, so it's hard to find game. Yeah. But if you don't do that, then you're forcing people to play maps they don't like, and you're convoluting it, and you're making people not even want to play at all. Yep. So if a map is going to do well, it's going to do well on its own merits, which means people are going to want to play it. So the way, I think, to get people to play new maps that are non-standard is you have a non-standard playlist, so like Rocket Labs, and then you just let people select which maps they want to play. Make yep. it ranked, have a short time period, and then you have those, you get rewards specific to that, uh, I, uh, to that playlist. I, I also think that they kind of went half, half into committing to all these different maps that, you know, they were just kind of like putting their toe in the water and seeing how the water is and everybody's saying, oh, we don't like them. And I kind of scared them off. But I, I think they, they really have to, you know, pump out like 10 map designs um, they don't even have to be like finished maps. Yeah. Maybe just like let the community well, decide. I mean, it's, it's, they've done it before with Rocket Labs, and then they say exactly. that because nobody plays Rocket Labs, yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, because they're the same maps. But that's not We're the case. We're done with them. Yeah. We know. It's like people love ranked. Yeah. People yeah. want to a competitive be environment. competitive. So make it a part of it. And make it a part of it and don't how, force how people to play How long until it goes everything. into RLCS and RLRS, though, do you think? I, I don't know because, or like, ever. personally, I love Stadium. I love yeah. the concept of, like, one thing that was annoying about those, like, Wasteland and all those other maps is, like, you got all these players who put all the time into memorizing the bounces yeah. off the corners. I, the I think it's bad the design, ceiling. though. But just let me, like, <laughs> I'll yeah. get to it. Okay. Because I think we can move forward once we establish that there will be change. Mm -hmm. But, like, with Stadium, all they did was, like, m keep all the bounces the same but make it bigger and move the goals. And I'm a fan of the idea of moving goals. Yep. Like, I'm a fan of, like, maybe even putting the goal halfway up the wall. So, like, you can't even, mm -hmm. like, shoot a ground shot. You have to shoot uh -huh. it in the air. Like, I want to see more experimentation with goal position. And then, like, I want to see experimentation with even things like, you know, the net in hoops? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. how you can drive through the net, but the ball yeah. rolls oh, up the net? Yeah. Right, right, well, right. what if you put an invisible backboard on stadium that your car can go through, but the ball bounces off of from the front? But it can go Ooh. through from the back. <laughs> I've never thought of that. <laughs> there you go. The type of stuff Get him on the team, boys. Designer James, dude. So, wow. Like, another thing He's I wanted to say is thing, I feel like they introduced the, the non standard maps a little early because people were still learning like a lot. And so, like, Neo Tokyo, for example, now, we know you can do flip resets off the ramps if you wanted mm -hmm. to. Or, like, or not flip reset, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. I feel like. If they reintroduced Neo Tokyo, and you know maybe it's not everyone's favorite map, but I feel like it would be a lot yeah. better and now I, yeah. than before. I agree, and I I think though like the first step or like you need to have a process of inclusion mm -hmm. for your players and have them feel like they want like you have to get people to want to play it. Yeah, and I think the formula there is very simple. It's the make it ranked. Offer rewards specific to the rank playlist for those Rocket Lab maps, and and don't make it preference based. Make it where people can queue, and then do like maybe the cycle is every two months, and like the ones that aren't working, yeah, then get them out of they here. They work yeah. too slow. Yeah, and I think as far as design goes, to actually maybe let Psyonix know what works. I think generally when they approach the the map in designing to make it harder to score and not to defend or just move around the map. I think that's a lot more fun 
because when you have to come up with new ways to score, that's, that's like a little puzzle, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if you defend it the same way, you don't feel like you're crippled mm -hmm. um, with all of your uh, like years of uh, mm -hmm. experience with mechanics and everything and knowing the map layout. Mm -hmm. So I think that would make it a lot more fun. And that's what made Stadium fun for me and my team because we're having so much fun doing infield passes and stuff. Yeah. And we got to be a little bit more creative. I, I so much love, like even on Stadium when there is no invisible backboard, I loved like just sitting on the goal and being yeah. the backboard for my team. <laughs> it's like hit it above here, yeah. I'll drop it down. I'll be the backboard for yeah. you guys. I just you know? like it because I feel like I'm playing hockey. I can go around the backside of the yeah. head. And, yeah, and, and like, Wade and Lurk in the back. Just and like funny. I used to be a super, net, like I used to be really against non-standard maps and ranked. And I was all, for me, it was all about oh, how I it was implemented. I don't have a problem against maps that are good. I just don't think that the maps that we had were what we wanted, and I don't think the way that it was implemented was in a way that was fun. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. I want to have fun. So, yep. like, I, I still want, I want to see new maps in RLCS. I want to see change because that's what's going to get additional longevity and strategy. So, and I and hope that Stadium one day will be in RLCS as a selectable map. I hope that we will continue to have a process that will have more fun maps coming out and people being able to play it. And then also maybe even do things where clubs for standard maps and for different maps can select boost layouts. So like where your 100% boosts are located, you get four, Ooh. but you can put them wherever you want. That would and you can insane. put all your mini ones wherever you want. Wait, like the club decides for the their club? side? The game will get way too complicated side. for oh, me. Oh, no, that would be so be cool. So I mean, I mean, are you kidding? <laughs> That I think is adds another layer where, of strategy. Where did these ideas come from, Dude, James? I'm telling you, did you just I've think got of this? James is a massive machine. amount of ideas. <laughs> oh Dude, he's a bot. Totally does his thing about this. Thinking <laughs> about Rocket League all day. That's okay, his job, so. man. Oh man. <laughs> all right, so th Damn. that's it with, for that segment. It changes we're, the game. <gasps> I know. Okay, yeah, we so uh -huh. no, we're not. So speaking of my ideas, this one was my segment. Mm. Um, Talking about like streaming Rocket League, like content creating for Rocket League, mm. streamers for Lock Rocket League pros and stuff like that. So if you look at Rocket League, like there's not a lot of big pros that stream. Yeah. There's not a lot of competitive players that stream. Like I don't stream anymore mostly because I don't have time. Yep. But like Rocket League is not an easy game to enjoyably stream. Have you guys tried streaming? Yeah. 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 It, it requires a lot of concentration, I feel like, and it's hard to you can't keep pay an audience really entertained. To chat. Well, I mean, yeah. I ignore the game, honestly. Yeah. Just, yeah, exactly. It's just That's like what chat ends up simulator. No, exactly. That's it. I'll throw just to talk to chat. I mean, if you're Pretty in interaction much. with your chat, everyone's leaving, and then if yeah. you're playing and you're not and like, it's like, Justin it's or It's like if I want to play with Moopy, no really <laughs> like, it's going to affect me because I'm playing yeah. with the worst player now. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to lose. Definitely. You know, but, sucks. but I think like what what Rocket League <laughs> needs to be enjoyable for content creators and str and streamers and stuff is you need to have a mode that is competitive, but it is not rank reliant, because right now with how Rocket League is, is if you know if I'm JNAPS and I have two thousand rating in twos, yeah. and I want to play with my buddy Perch Peach who's like diamond two. And <laughs> Sean, he's 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 his friend. I was just well, they are friends, so, so they're good. They're he was, good. A, he was a good player, but uh, <laughs> but like he Perch is, Peach sorry, will guys. get he, he will get a matchmaking value of the same as JNAPS because of how the system works. So JNAPS isn't going to have fun because they're going to get matched up against you know two other top rated twos players and they're going to get oh. railed. Oh my god, it's my turn. All right. <laughs> Stage. Jeez, guys. Your alarm is oh, sorry. Sorry. Why do you guys have random I'm alarms? Turning up. You guys have random alarms what? just on your right. phone. I only have one. And I'm get, so curious what they're actually topic. We're in a timer right, here. Anyway, no, no, sorry, no, this is when I usually practice with my okay. Rocket League team. Go on. Right. Shout so out to Russell. He doesn't actually Russell practice. And this guy just plays Russ. <laughs> You're all right. Okay, back back to what I was talking about. So so it's not fun to play if you're Jane Apps with somebody who is of, of a much lower rank. Even if you're going to have, and it's not going to be fun because you're going to get destroyed. So I think there's a few ways to fix this to where you can offer competitive mode that is. Uh, going to be enjoyable to watch. Also, when you're streaming Rocket League, there's no narrative. It's like you oh, lose yeah. some points, you win some points. Who yep. gives a flying shit? You know? Yeah. Like, Hooray. who cares? I'm at who 2, cares? So, like, imagine this. I've got two main ideas that I want. One is copy Hearthstone Arena. Copy okay. Hearthstone Arena. And in order to do this, what you'd have to do is make the events currency system all the time. Make it forever. It's a part of Rocket League now. You buy playing, you get currency. You can buy... Decryptors that get you items from opening crates, or you can save up a lot and you can get mega decryptors, which allow you to have the tradable items. So you can save up to where you get 
Uh, not oh, only is okay. it iron, but it, yeah, you can trade you it. Can trade it. And you can save up a lot of points. But also what you can do with these points is you can buy arena runs or rocket runs where you What's and that? another player – or like you could do one, twos, or threes. If you buy a rocket run – if you're in a twos party, you both have to contribute money to a run, and you can see all your active runs, and you go and you try to play and win 12 games. And it ignores rank. It matches you up based on your, your record of win-loss. Mm. So me, if I'm John Sandman and I'm playing with Rizzo, <laughs> we buy a rocket run for you know however many rocket points, and we now go and try to win 12 games in a row without losing three. And depending on how much we win, we get more points back and maybe we get a mega decryptor, mm. maybe get a white Zamba or whatever. So then, you know, right now people care so much about like good competitive games. This is more about winning 12 games. So obviously you're going to play really bad players at the start. So maybe what you do for rocket runs is have it where as soon as there's a three goal differential, then it automatically ends like a mercy rule. So that yeah. for the first games, you know, they go quick, so no one has to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you make it all the way to 12 wins, you get a lot of stuff. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Um, Endgame Rewards has been, uh, like, in talks way more recently than before. But, like, people want incentives to play the game because everyone's just bored of ranked at this yeah. point. And like, so, like, and it, so what that will do then is it will solve the problem of I want to play with my friend who's garbage. And then also, as a viewer, I can't wait to see them get 12 wins so I can see all this glorious loot they have. And if people want to see competition, I don't necessarily buy that. Like, if you want to go, like, you can see JNAPs do Jazer shots against Lobies, and it's going to be fun to watch. People watch Ninja all the time slay noobs in Fortnite yeah. who are probably 10-year-olds playing on their stopping. mobile phone. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, people, like, I think that's fine. I don't think that the competition always needs to be the highest I, level. I think people would really enjoy it, too. Even the low levels uh, that do run into JNAPs, for instance. Come on, you know, if you first start playing the game, if you really like following esports, you'll go, oh my god. Yeah, like, it's I'm, exciting. Oh my yeah. god, JNAPs! Have you guys seen that I Killed Ninja clip? <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> I killed JNAPs, I killed JNAPs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I killed JNAPs. And then right. we'll have really fun uh, upsets like that, too. Yeah. yeah. There was one other idea that I had that's drive. Oh yeah, it was in-game tournaments. So then having in-game tournaments that run at a you know a certain period of time, like let's say Psionics, they have an official in-game tournament that is available to compete in every hour. The first 128 teams that sign up get sign up. Once that many are signed up, then it closes, and they they're that'll just keep being tournaments that pop up until there's not enough teams to fill a bracket. Whatever you have these tournaments available on the hour, or maybe every six hours, or whatever, and then you just play through the end, and it's the same kind of logic. Like however well you place in the tournament then you get items related to how well you play. So then it's another situation where it's competitive, but it's not rank reliant. And playing with people who aren't your rank isn't going to hurt your rank, but you're still having fun competing and trying to play as best as you can. I thought that's how the tournament system that we have now was going to be implemented, because that's kind of how uh, StarCraft, StarCraft 2 has it, where they kind of have, okay, we're gonna have a tournament at 7 p.m., you, you either you're in it or you're not, and it's better that way, yeah. I think, than just having someone make a tournament and you don't know who's going to mm. be in it and there's not really yeah. any point to and it. So, so these, not only the, will these be fun for players, but imagine how easy that would be to stream. Imagine how easy the content is. Like, I'll log in and play that tournament with so-and-so because it's in the in-game interface. I just have to go in, sign up, and then, boom, easy. Stream is there. They can watch. Or, oh, I can just log in. I'll do two arena runs with, with Rizzo. You know, yeah. that's the type of con and it's like th it feels like you're doing something. You are completing something. You're getting something. You went from point A to point B. You didn't just have this nebulous fucking journey. Oh, shit. I shouldn't have said that. F word. My bad, guys. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Ring, whoa, come whoa. On. We're whoa. ringing it in. You know, <laughs> What's eventually. your damn language? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but it's not like a nebulous thing through matchmaking. It's like has a point and it feels like it's going somewhere, you know. So uh, I think that'll be it for that topic. I, we oh, will one more thing. Just right, one more thing up? about that. I think it also would fix the problem that we've all experienced streaming Rocket League, and it would create downtime to talk to your chat, <laughs> like natural yeah. downtime where you're yeah, not yeah. just waiting for a match uh, in matchmaking, and you're kind of you don't know how long it's going to be. It's kind of a right. set amount. Yeah, because I feel like 90% of the streams I tune into, they're just in training for like an hour. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like they're just talking to chat. Like so people if it's yeah. like that. only five minutes yeah. maybe between games, then it's a good balance between the games and actual interaction. All right, so that is the final few seconds 
we are going on to our last topic, which is just a thank you. I'm going to bring up Discord right here. Uh, I asked Quint earlier for names uh, of people, names of all the people who helped. Right now, all I know is Ari and Sh uh, Strangest and uh, Quint, but I'm sure there was more. But seriously, thank you to Rival Esports. This show would not have been possible. All our future shows that we're going to do would not be possible without Rival Esports. They are the best. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, let's thank go, Jesse. Yeah, let's let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Jesse, thank you. He's off camera. And then all you guys, seriously, like it's been such a, an awesome experience. Obviously, the show starting a little late was my fault. I didn't get everything set up ahead of time, scrambling to get that done. But I had a blast this first show. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Jesse, can you bring up the music slider so we can, yeah, like keep Jesus going. So we can keep dance. going. Yeah, you might need to <laughs> tab to the to the tab to Chrome. Yeah, and turn it up if you need to, or, or start it again. Yeah, I know. Bit, but yeah, I don't hear anything right now. DJ Airy. There we go. Do I hear it? Oh, you keep yeah, going. You do. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, all right, down a little bit. <laughs> down a little bit. All right, there we go. <laughs> Lovely. So thank you, thank you, Rival Esports. Uh, you guys are the best. Seriously, I'm gonna see if Quent messaged me back saying the names of all the people that helped out. Quent, Strangest, Airy, Jayski, S. Simpson, S.J. Impson, as uh, Quent said. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Anything that you guys want to say to close out the official stream, we'll stay behind after the stream is over to answer questions from chat, interact with chat for a little bit, but we will close it for the podcast people right after this. Last words. Oh, I called my teammate Russell. He doesn't like being called Russell. <laughs> Sorry, Russ. Damn, that's just messed up. Yeah, I, I, messed up. <laughs> it was actually on my mind the, the whole entire show. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you call Russell? Uh, my teammate, Russ Celadon. Russ yeah. Celadon. Oh, God. Did I say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say it? Russ Celadon? Russ Celadon. Okay. All right, and Johnny Boy oh, wait, hosts now everybody's us, gonna I think. Call him Thank Russell. you, Johnny Boy. <laughs> We're not hosting anyone yet. Johnny Boy, thank you for that host. Uh, you can host someone else if you want right now. We're just closing out the stream. We're, uh, I'll, I guess I'll close out for the podcast people. Guys, uh, on SoundCloud or on whatever podcast thing we're doing, thank you for tuning in to the first ever Rush Hour presented by Gold Rush GG, powered by Rival Esports. We appreciate you supporting this and supporting us. And we will be back next Tuesday at a some time, maybe 7.30 p.m. Pacific, maybe 7. Just tune in on Twitter at Gold Rush GG. We'll let you know. But that's going to be it for us. Until next time, peace out.